Welcome friends to the lectures on second module on the online course titled HSC Management in Offshore and Petroleum Engineering. We know that in our module 2 we are focusing on lectures related to operational safety. In this lecture which is the third lecture in module 2 we are going to discuss about some lessons which we could learn from the past accidents which has happened in oil and gas sector. We already said in the last lecture that rule based regime and the alternative methods could lead to certain converging ideas in terms of establishing or assuring safety. So, now let us ask a question what should a good safety program have? Because once we know what are all the contents a good safety program should have or should be present in a program, then violation of these could lead or could must have led to certain accidents which are remarkable accidents in oil and gas sector which we will discuss in this lecture. So, good safety program should identify and eliminate the safety hazards. Please understand we are talking not about the risk, we are talking about the scenario. Even the scenario itself the safety program should address. Should therefore, prevent the existence of hazard in the first place itself, should prevent the very existence of the hazard of any hazard in the first place. So, therefore, what should be the input for such safety programs? You must have thorough knowledge about safety, which we are intending to learn through this course. You should also have experience in practicing safety, One should of course, have a technical competence in implementing the safety programs. Of course, one should have management support if the client or the user is not interested in implementing or realizing the importance of safety, a good program can never survive and of course, overall there should be a big commitment to safety this very very important. So, one and all including the employer and every employee should realize that safety should be inherent part of the business of day to day life. So, commitment to safety is very important. Now, the difficulty is a good safety program has a great demerit. What could be seen as a major disadvantage in a good safety program? It is very slow to respond. Any violations will not cause immediate effect on revising the safety program. Therefore, safety program is always intended to react very slow. Okay. The second issue is it gives very less emphasis. on continuous revisions, I should say continuous updates. This is one of the greatest demerit which has been felt in oil and gas industries which is initiated thanks to the government sector and the private operators who are all in this business for many years has realized that each and every employee including the top level management must undergo a safety program at least once in a 6 months period or at least once in a year as a minimum requirement to update the latest technologies and tools in terms of assuring safety and identifying and removing or managing hazards. The third issue 
is very serious for countries like Asian countries like India where population is very high and technical manpower is available or expected to be available in abundance. It has got a very less workforce involvement. Because people strongly believe that safety can be ensured by mechanical means. That is, for example, you can put sensors, you can put fire alarms, you can put fire detectors, you can put smoke detectors, you can also implement certain control mechanisms in the machines which can implement safety automatically. That is not the case, that cannot be the case because under surveys you have a technical support which really reacts to these kind of indications because in certain cases wherever accidents have happened in oil and gas sector, all these alarm sensors were found to be failing because the first thing which happens is an electrical short circuit in case of which will make all these mechanical and electromechanical devices inoperative. Therefore, a person or a personnel or a team should be completely trained in adhering to safety practices that is very, very important. So, manpower development towards safety program. what we call in a larger brackets as capacity building is very important towards safety program. Then the question comes what is safety? I mean what are we talking about? Is it safety of human being alone working in the plant? Is it safety of employer who is investing money in the plant? Is it safety of the equipments? Is it safety of the environment? Is it safety of the societal responsibility? What we are talking about? Safety is a health activity of preventing from being exposed to hazardous situation. That is a general definition given by international rules or ISO. Safety is a health activity of prevention from being exposed to hazardous situation. words you can please see here preventing to get exposed from hazardous situation. So, safety is coupled with health all the time that is why the program is called health safety and environment management. So, health and safety to go together two legs of a human being they go together they are coupled together they cannot be separated. The moment you say safety is ensured you ensure also that the working environment is healthy. So, therefore, by remaining safe the disastrous consequences can be avoided thereby can result in saving of human life, plant and environment where the industry is located. So, now the question is very clear why safety is important, why are we bothered about safety? Safety is important because Naturally, any living creature around the world prefers to be safer rather than risking their life for unfavorable conditions. So, inherently everybody is psychologically inbuilt to be remain safe and nobody wants to take risk. This is true even in the case of missionaries. So, the term safety always refers to risk. So, term safety is coupled with health that we have learnt. Term safety always refers to risk also. The moment you say safety risk is also in health. That is why safety programs are generally assessed using risk analysis tools. So, when the chance of risk are becoming higher then the situation is said to be highly unsafe. Therefore, risk has to be assessed and eliminated 
to ensure safety. So, to ensure safety, risk has to be let us say identified, assessed and eliminated that becomes very important. Therefore, one can say a good safety program should focus on assessing, identifying and eliminating risk present in a given situation. However, if you look at the definition classically in ISO, safety does not refer to risk, it refers to hazard situation, please understand. So, the very objective of a safety program is to identify the occurrence of risk even before it becomes a risk, because we already know from the previous lectures, risk and hazard are classically different, though one follows the other. Okay? So, now let us see importance of safety in offshore and petroleum industries. So, we all know that safety should be assured in offshore and petroleum industry, because this is one sector which is highly prone to hazardous situations because of the nature of business. Now, I can give you two good reasons for practicing safety, two good reasons for practicing safety. One, very important, may be disagreeable to a few of you, but still it is very important this actually is a live practice what people will be focused in, in at least in oil and gas sector. Investment in offshore industry I am talking about both capex and opex operational and capital investment so investment in offshore industry is several times higher than any other industry please understand this. So, this industry is involved with a very high financial risk So, please understand my safety program should not only take care of the health safety of the human being and personnel, it should also take care of the economic investment otherwise the business cannot survive. The second reason could be offshore designs right from the planning, let us say the conceptual planning, development of the structural form, let us say the front end engineering design and analysis, erection, commissioning, etcetera. Offshore design in every stage is very complex. So, how does it count for safety? Since the design is very complex, it is not easy to reconstruct an existing facility. Bhattacharya at all. Two thousand ten A and B. It is not very easy to reconstruct existing facility because the designs are innovative, site specific. Function specific, economically driven, dominated, I should say. So, put together, we can say offshore platforms are custom designed. In sense, you cannot recreate or reassemble or replan and invest on such platforms which have been put to use. So, two good reasons investment is very high, designs are innovative.
So, one has got to really ensure safety in offshore industry. Prior to analyzing safety, one should understand the key issues in petroleum processing and production. Safety can be ensured only by identifying and assessing hazards. So, the foremost step in safety identify or identifying and assessing hazards. I can put more specific in each and every stage of operation. This also inherently says the back feed loop that hazard is present in every stage of operation. Identifying and assessing a hazard can be done in two ways. It can be done either qualitatively or quantitatively, both are QRA. So, qualitatively can also assess hazards what we call as HAZOP studies. Quantitatively can also hazard uh, analyze hazards which we call as risk assessment because risk has to deal with the number which should say what is the probability of exceedance of this number or this value in terms of accepted goals. Having said this let us talk about some lessons what we could learn from accidents. I am going to pick up couple of in accidents which has happened in oil and gas sector where the diagnosis is available and people all are aware, but however it is important for me to reiterate this so that people get this capture of idea in one shot in the middle of the lecture. So, they realize that accidents are or they have happened because of violation of good safety programs. Let us quickly see what are responsibilities of different personnel before and after accident, why such accidents have happened, can these accidents be avoided, if at all they have happened what are the consequences. So, well, let us talk about the hazard scenario and the risk evaluation both together in this example. So, we all know a classical Piper Alpha accident. which is very widely spoken and read and learnt and understood and deliberated in many congress in petroleum engineering happened on July 1988. The foremost issue when we talk about this particular accident is the financial loss occurred to the investor. The financial loss was estimated then approximately about 1.4 billion US dollars. So, very high value in terms of the original capex investment because persons or companies or organizations or the nations together invest on this kind of innovative structural systems only as a development towards their economic growth. If any such situation happen which leads to a financial disaster, this will not only affect the growth of the company or the nation, it will also affect the global standards of economy. Because oil price hike and lowering causes recession or enhancement or financial weakness which has been felt, realized, understood and experienced by every citizen of every nation in this world who are all using oil as one of the important commodity for their industrial development where in India and Asian countries for sure this is unreplaceable sector. So, when such high investment is being at stake which has caused a financial damage what we call as property damage which is one of the important issue. One can immediately ask me sir safety program is related to health, 
health means it is a synonym attached to human, but we are focusing on the financial part. Please recollect one of the important reasons why safety is important and necessary in offshore industry is offshore industry is dealing with very high investment and has a very high financial risk. So, in any safety program, if a program does not analyze and assess the financial risk cost because of the consequences of the incident or the accident, then that is not a good risk analysis or it is not ensuring a good safety. So, we are talking about the financial risk first. So, property damage was assessed to be then in this time about 1.4 million dollars US dollars. This is considered to be one of the worst accident even today in UK. Now, let us come to the second argument about 165 people lost their life. A crew of 220 I should say are affected by different manner. So, there is a potential, there is a potential of human health loss, there is a potential of financial loss. Now, let us focus on this specific part. It is not that 165 personnel who ended with a life, it is 165 technical personnel. Each one of them who has lost the life were experienced, trained towards safety programs. To replace this or this set of people and this set of crew, to develop confidence in them that no such accident would repeat or reoccur is very difficult. As engineers, as technicians, as managers, as economists, when we read such incidents and understand the reality behind them, no one of us could come forward to really work in such worst scenario because we always think will our life be at risk? If such an uh, incident reoccurs, will our life be at stake? Therefore, as a public, as an employee, as an environmentalist, as a government authority, even as a common user, we would like to know what are those steps the company or the investor or the employer has taken towards ensuring my safety. So, that is so crooked, that is so crude to look at it. In general, we should say, what are those situations which has occurred or which has resulted in such accident? So, that is an engineering analysis. An economist will also like to love to look at that, because we should always address in avoiding, in depleting, eliminating or controlling those scenarios. Therefore, safety program the post investments of any accidents will always teach a lesson towards a good safety program in improving the tools of analyzing the hazard situation. So, there are two issues here, great loss of human life which is non replaceable, irreparable, we all agree, we feel very sorry, in fact we salute all those people who have been responsible for sincere working towards the particular production of the industry. And we feel very, very sorry that we are not a, we learnt from the news that this gentleman or this set of people and these people have been affected because of the accident. So, as an engineer, what is our role? Let us try to analyze the scenario which lead to this accident. The diagnosis says, the analysis says, it was mainly attributed to human error.
This was of course a very big eye opener in the offshore industry to revisit safety issues. Based on such incidents, quoting this as a very evident example, all safety programs were revisited by different organizations and safety became a very top priority in terms of the management policies. So, let us quickly see what happened here. The maintenance work was going on on a high pressure pipeline, let us say. So, obviously, when you do your maintenance work on a specific line, the line will be generally shut down or offset from the process line from the main process line using what we call as a condensate pump and a safety wall. We use this upper tenances to isolate the line from the main process line because the production cannot stop. Obviously, in offshore designs you will always notice the process and flow line will be designed in such a manner that no single lifeline will be actually meant in the design. There will be always alternatives because of two reasons. One, during maintenance you need to have an alternate line. Two, during due to operational safety you may not close down all the lines because the pressure in the line will get built up in the input source. Now, interestingly let us see the maintenance work was being carried out as a part of the system. Since this condensate pipe and safety wall was closed this led to leak of condensates. So, since condensates got leaked, the pressure wall was removed one of the was removed. Interestingly, remove a wall or a condensate pipe of the condensate pipe, you generally block it blocked with a blind flange that is what we generally do. More interestingly this operation carried out by one set of crew is not communicated to the second shift crew. So, let us say the main difficulty is or let us say the main source is a bad shift over. So, I should associate this only as a human error, whether the error comes from the managerial side, whether it comes from the employee's side does not matter, I put all of them as human error. Equipments, plants has nothing to do with their bad shift over. Now, let us again continue. So, one crew in the earlier shift who did the blind flange removed the PV, the safety wall from the condensate pressure line was not communicated, documented to the subsequent shift. So, without knowing this the new crew or the second shift crew turned on the pipeline, turned on the let us say alternate pump thinking that one of the condensate pump was 
in damage because of maintenance problems and they switched on the other one. The moment you switch on the other one, the blind flange which is not supposed to be designed to take away the pressure created by the pump failed. So, firewalls fail resulted in high pressure I mean very high pressure leading to several explosions not one. So, now what are mathematical tool you have to study the explosions the atmospheric pollution, the mathematical way of finding out the distance at which the explosion or the pollution could reach the land will all go in vain if we do not have a basic plan. It means here the main reason can be associated to lack of safety training. The intensified fire exploded due to failure in closing of the flow line of the gas from the tartan platform, it is very specific. So, the tartan platform flow line was closed which resulted in this unprecedented accident. Now, the fundamental question comes can this be avoided? We all know that yes, it should be avoided, but this was actually negligence. I should say, let us say, oversight. So, safety training to personnel is very important. Now, there is a mechanical failure which has happened subsequently. The automatic firefighting systems remain inactive since there were divers working under water before the incident happened. So, when the human person is involved in maintenance work, you do not switch on the automatic firefighting systems, you have to do it manually. Therefore, the primary source of this incident arose essentially from human error. which essentially occurred from lack of training in shift handovers, which is one of the very serious issue. After this very significant and stringent changes have been made in the offshore industry with regard to the safety management, regulations and training with effect only to this incident. So, gentlemen, though this incident is very bad to really know it has occurred, resulted in very high financial and human loss. However, this incident or accident has given a very interesting and important and vital lessons, lesson to all the offshore engineers from which one can learn that how violation in simple terms, negligence or oversighting, etcetera can cause devastation. A small error can pile up to end up in a disaster. So, each one of us is responsible for ensuring safety in such situations. So, please look at the screen now. You have an image showing the Piper Alpha disaster. That is the Tartan plant symbolically shown where the gas line explosion was released and the fire is spread. 
you can see a devastating explosion and fire occurred which resulted in a very serious consequences for the industry, for the environment, for the country and for offshore oil and gas sector in total. The second case study which we will discuss will be the Exxon Valdez, very interesting, very informative, many of us have read this and we all know this, but still let us again diagnose what could be a new dimension for this particular accident. Happened on 23rd March. Nineteen eighty nine, which is underway from Valdez, Alaska, which has happened on a cargo. The cargo was carrying one eighty thousand tons of crude oil. This collided. with an iceberg which resulted in this accident. Now, 11 cargo tanks got punctured, within few hours about 19,000 tons of crude oil spilt within few hours, which has caught, uh, caused a very serious environmental pollution. By the time the tanker was refloated, which happened on 5th April, you can see the dates of course, 1989 about 37,000 tons of crude oil was lost. You can see the commercial loss, the hard work done by the people for ex exploring this crude oil is also lost and it also resulted in a very serious environmental consequences. So, now it has got a very indirect consequence. Let us see what is that. About 6600 square kilometers area of the fishing ground near the site had sheet of oil. So, it has caused a very serious environmental damage to the ecosystem. So, the size of damage was the size of spill was very very high. It happened in a remote location. Therefore, the rescue operations and industrial effort To control the spill was actually inactive, not very effective. If you look at the screen now, you will see the picture which is depicting the Exxon Valdez oil spill from the specific vessel which has caused serious pollution to a very large area which has affected the fisheries. Interestingly, the data shows that the spill resulted in about 20 to 25 percent of the capacity of the tanker is lost. Therefore, friends we must agree that safety should rather play an important role in offshore industry.
because we do not want any financial risk in the business. It will affect the economy of the nation. We do not want any loss of life because they are technical people who are responsible for supporting and improving the economy of the country through oil exploration and production and processing. We also want to be sure that if you want to join this business or this sector in the future, we want to run this, we want to lead this, we should ensure that our safety is also taken care of. And as a good citizen, as a good contributor to the global economy, being an engineer and scientist, we must ensure that the public, the society and the environment is completely safe even though I intervene with the environment to make my business because oil exploration is intervention with the environment. We are exploring oil from the seabed. So, even though I intervene with the nature, but however, my business is going to remain safe which causes no hazard situation. We have to practice this. So, for practicing this, learning tools are secondary. The primary thing is feeling the importance. So, safety assurance is a feeling, it is not education. It is to be practiced, not to be learnt. It is to be felt, not to be advised. It should be realized without seeing it. It should have, it should be followed without challenging its consequences. However, please understand and remain noted that offshore industries still have certain risk acceptance levels. That is important. You cannot reduce risk to 0 percent. There are always some alarm situations where the investments towards risk reduction are becoming highly impractical. Therefore, do not attempt to make the hazard situation completely 0 or the risk to practically to want to be adamantly 0. There are always acceptable risk levels. There is always a small compromise made. However, what is the level? What is the acceptance criteria? Who fixes this? We will talk about this in certain case studies and examples in the coming lectures. I hope this lecture was interesting and <coughs> you could understand the diagnosis of these two events, how it was very important to really realize and feel why safety program is necessary. We also learn what are the two factors and many factors contributing to a good safety program, why it is important. After all, what is safety? How do you define safety? Thank you very much.